Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, upon popular request, I'm gonna react again to Ahmed Didat, this time with his video, Who is the Founder of Christianity? We had a bit of an unfortunate start here on the channel with Ahmed Idad. May he rest in peace when we reviewed his video, Pornography in the Bible. However, today I've been told Ahmed Didat will explain the difference between following Jesus or following Paul. Guys, unfortunately, it's a very old video and it has a little bit of an audio distortion. So no, it's not my mic over here. It is the original video. Please bear with me. Anyways, with no further ado, let's have a look. The Jewish belief and the Christian belief is that the life that we know when we die, we will be resurrected and there's what we call salvation. The Jews believe that the salvation is based upon their obedience to the law, Christians believe it's based upon belief in Jesus as Christ. What is the basis for the Muslim belief in salvation? Uh, if what you said is correct, that the Christian belief is in believing Jesus as the Christ, we have the salvation because we believe that Jesus is the Christ. We believe that. But no, I think you fail to say that you believe that he died for your sins, that he paid the price. Your salvation is got through the blood of Christ, that yes. he paid the supreme sacrifice with his life. I think that is what you had in mind. Now, that topic, the subject, while I was reading the index, if you remember, I said, Christ Jesus not crucified is another topic. I've had debates with Christian you know, evangelists, Americans, evangelists on this topic like a Floyd, Professor Floyd e. Clark from Johnson Bible College. I had a debate with him in, uh, uh, in, in, in the Royal Albert Hall, London last year. I had another Professor Simpkins, you know, also an American. He came to South Africa. We debated with him, was Christ crucified as well as is Jesus God? How about the crucifixion? So we say Jesus Christ was not killed, nor was he crucified. This was a subject of debate last night with Dr. Robert Douglas. That is the main theological difference between Christianity and Islam, and this is why Christians believe that Islam comes from the devil because it denies the crucifixion. Of the Zwema Institute. He's the director of the Zwema Institute, a missionary organization in this country. I had a debate with him last night. And I think the tape, as well as the videotapes are available. You can, you can avail yourself of those. How does the Muslim get salvation? You see, to Muslim, there's only one way. And the way is for all eternity the same. There is no change. God is not the author of confusion. He wouldn't tell Moses something and he gives something contradictory to Jesus and again something to contradict him to Muhammad. If it is all coming from the same source, the message must be the same. His law is... I absolutely agree with this. I quoted it in previous videos of mine, the passage in the Quran where it states that the pattern of Allah is never changing. And this holds true for me. The truth is eternal because it comes from an eternal God who is never changing. Therefore, the truth cannot be changing. Eternal. Simple. And it is not changeable. He doesn't change his laws exactly. by the minutes. He fails one system, then he introduces another system. That is not my God. He doesn't fail with this system. Yeah, we agree. He gave to Moses and to the children of Israel a law. The law was that as you sow, so you will reap. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20. Especially if we're talking about changing laws, this is what you see in our democracy. Laws are changing consistently. Now you see drag queen story hour in kindergartens. They are teaching our children that there are 178 different genders. This is what happens when you consistently change man-made laws. But God's law cannot be changing. We are given it's that impossible. in a nutshell. By definition. Which is truly Islamic. It says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Yeah. And the Christian puts a full stop. All his literature, his evangelical literature, he stops there, puts a full stop where there's no full stop. He said, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. 
the shall son perish. shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Father Adam, he sinned. We, his children, are not responsible for what he did. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. His sons today, in Los Angeles, last June, this previous June, 300,000 sodomites, whom you call gays, they gathered in San Francisco on a pilgrimage led by 50 lesbians on motorcycles. <laughs> Here in San Francisco in your country. Yep. God Almighty will not ask Adam and say, hey, look at your children, this rubbish. What have you produced? No, God will not ask him. He's not responsible. He says, the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Whatever good thing the good man does, he gets his reward. Yeah, that's exactly what I meant when I mentioned drag queen story hour. You see all kinds of degenerate movements that are not only accepted, but they become lawful in our ever-changing progressive democracy. If we don't have an eternal standard of right and wrong, anything can become permissible. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Whatever the evil monger does, sinner does, he gets his punishment. Yeah, makes Salvation. sense. Salvation. Right. How do you get salvation? It continues. Jesus said to his disciples, follow me and sin no more. This is what I got out of the Bible. I should stop sinning and not rely on Jesus' death for my sins to be taken off me. That would be very irresponsible. Continue. I believe. But if the wicked will turn, means repent, from all the sins that he has committed and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. Yeah. Spiritually. Physically, we all die. The yep. good and the bad, the sinner and the saint, we all die. But this die means spiritually you will not be destroyed. You will live forever. Eternal life. That is salvation. Yes. You repent of your evil, do that which is lawful and right. Whatever God told you to do, you do. Heaven is for you. Solomon the wise. Yeah, absolutely makes sense. And this is what I've been questioning within Christianity yet again. Through the crucifixions, Jesus died for our sins. But if I look around, I see a more sinful society than ever before. So what happens to those sins? Are we allowed to sin now? Again, talking about those pride parades in San Francisco or all over the world. What is happening to those people? Are they allowed now? Is it legitimate? Is it lawful for them? So then we don't have to change anymore. We can stay sinful and everything will be forgiven. He tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes. It doesn't make sense. Advising his son and through him advising us. He says, and further, by this my son be admonished. Learn a lesson from this. Of making many books, there is no end. All your excuses for not doing the job, not doing the work, not obeying God. There's no end to your excuses. Of making many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. It's true. You know, you say, I'm going to study Buddhism. I'm going to study Taoism. I'm going to study Judaism. Sure. I'm going to study Islamism. And I will come to a conclusion. Yeah, that's what I've been doing as well. And it has its place. But ultimately, I would fully agree there with the Bible. It is wary for the flesh. Absolutely. Because you're consistently in your rational mind. You're trying to wrap your mind around God. God ultimately is incomprehensible. And this is why we need a spiritual practice in our life to balance the two. He says, you'll get tired. Yeah. He says, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. For so sure. let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter in a nutshell. Let's get the message. He says, fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. That's all. Fear God and keep his commandments. That is salvation. Jesus Christ told you the same. Yeah. He says, very, verily I say unto you, most certainly I'm telling you this. Except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. There is no heaven for you unless you are better than the Jew. Exactly. And the scribes and the Pharisees were the intellectuals, the ones that knew the scriptures very well. But in practice, they didn't follow God's law. They didn't know God. They only knew the laws of men. Except it exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. He said again, think not that I'm come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Yes. For verily I say unto you, most certainly I'm telling you, heaven and earth shall pass away, but one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. Tittle, jot, jot is the smallest letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Not even that amount is to go out of the law of God. Yep. True. So one jot or one this is why I still don't understand why Christians do eat pork, for example. It shall in no wise which I don't do even as a Christian. Pray. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, least commandments, or shall teach men so, shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall teach and do, shall be called great 
in the kingdom of heaven. I said, we teach and we do. Yeah, many Christians nowadays, they have the assumption that all of those laws were simply for the Jews and we as Christians do not need them. I why? ask you, do you keep the laws and the commandments? You say, no. I said, why not? He says, the law is nailed to the cross. Why not? He said, we are living in the grace. That's what the Christian says. Many do. You're living in the grace. I said, where did you get this? This idea that the law is nailed to the cross is done away with. Where did you get it? So he quotes me. Philippians, Galatians, Corinthians, Thessalonians, Colossians. And so who's this? Who's this? Timothy, Romans. Who's all this? What's this? Who's that? It's a Paul, 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 Paul. Yeah, man. I said, who is your master? You say, Jesus. What does he say? Saint Paul, formerly known as Saulus, working for the Roman Empire, persecuting Christians, real Christians, killing those Christians, but then by a miraculous vision, all of a sudden becoming a Christian after he changed what Christianity means. In Jesus. And Jesus he said, changed his the ways. disciple is not greater than the master. Master is Jesus. Yeah. What he tells you, I say, I listen to my master, Jesus. He never had the pig. He, none of his disciples ever touched that pork. You call it pork, ham, bacon, whatever you call it. He never touched that stuff. None of his disciples ever touched it. And nope. you're all pig eaters. Christians. Yep, most are. Where did you get this? Not it, all, but most. So Peter had a dream. On that dream, now you eat pigs. <laughs> when my master never ate it, he wouldn't eat it. It was abhorrent to him. He killed 2,000 pigs, one hit. He destroyed them all. Yeah. You know that? But now you don't listen to him. You are now living in the grave. <sighs> I said, are you circumcised? He says, no. I said, why aren't you? No, it's a major commandment. God gave. Your Lord was Christ. Jesus Christ was circumcised. I said, what is good for your God should be good for you. No, you won't circumcise. Why won't you? This is the law of God. He entered into between Abraham and his descendants forever. And you claim to be spiritual descendants. How does that absolve you? I have to say that circumcision is still a huge issue for me. Please let me know in the comment section what you think about this subject. For me personally, even reading the Quran, Allah creates perfectly. So if God creates perfectly, why would we need to modify our bodies? This is something I cannot comprehend. Jesus was circumcised and you are not? He said, no. He says, Paul said, circumcision, circumcision is nothing and non-circumcision is nothing. I said, Jesus says not even one jot or one tittle is to pass from the law. Can't you see? You are not following Jesus. You're following Paul, Paul, Paul. He is the real founder of Christianity. Are Paul, great. not Jesus. Of Christianity, the state religion of Rome. Yes, absolutely. Paul is the inventor of that. Therefore, your great countryman, Michael H. Hart, he wrote a book on the top 100, yeah, the greatest 100 in him. history. The most influential 100 people from Adam to current time. And he gives us a list. The hundred, the top hundred, are the greatest hundred in history. Michael H. Hart, New York, of the Hart Publishing Company. And in that... Yeah, the Hart Publishing Company, because his father owns that company. List of the most I don't find the source men, legitimate. After giving the list of hundred names, he puts them in the order of seniority. Number one, number five, number 50, number 99, who, who, who? And he puts Muhammad number one. The most influential man in history, according to Michael, Michael S. Hart, an American in America. Publishing I would a book see of why you would use it as an argument, but at the same time, it's just a one man that wrote a book in the publishing company of his father. I personally don't see this as legitimate. Pages retailing about 10 years ago for $15, which I paid for it. Maybe it cost 50 today. I don't know. He says, Muhammad is the most influential man in history. And his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, number three. He's God and Savior number three. And he gives reason. Yeah, I don't even like this. He is comparing the prophets and Islam itself teaches that the prophets are all equal and they shouldn't be compared and God is above all his creations. So now saying Prophet Muhammad was number one and Jesus was just number three is not very Quranically accurate either. Not because some Arab bribe. I don't like it. So here's 10,000 for you. Say a good word about Muhammad. Put him number one. You give 100,000, put him number one in your book. No. No Arabs could ever think of that. It's possible, but not probable for an Arab to do that. Why does he put Jesus Christ as God and Savior number three? He said, you see, the honor for Christianity is to be shared between Paul and Jesus. Actually, Paul is the real founder of Christianity.
I don't know how valid this statement is. I would have to do further research. However, last time I checked, Jesus didn't end up on number one on Michael Hart's list here because Jesus wasn't a family man. He wasn't a father and he wasn't a statesman. So Muhammad was all of those things. And this is why in terms of influence, he had to place Muhammad on number one. Jesus. But yet again, I don't really know why this would be an argument to begin with. Listen to him. You can't help being a Muslim. You'll be a Muslim through and through. But you don't want to listen to Jesus. Read the books. Listen to the sermons. It's Paul, 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 not Jesus. What did Jesus say? He says, he is not of me who does not take his cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. But the cowards that we are, we are not prepared to pick up the cross. I don't exactly know why he would choose the example of the cross. All right, the video continues, this time in text format. There's controversy regarding the messages of Jesus and Paul. Paul's teachings are usually opposing Jesus' teaching, who happens to be the master. The messages of Jesus and Paul were fundamentally different. Reconciliation of their messages cannot be done by harmonization. Jesus preached the kingdom of heaven, Paul did not. Paul preached justification by faith alone. Jesus did not. Yes, I absolutely agree. And as I said previously, what does that imply? Should we now just continue sinning and we will be forgiven? That, of course, wouldn't make any sense. It continues. Jesus' message was primarily for the Jews alone and not for humanity. The original Jesus movement was a monotheistic movement that sought to bring about the kingdom of God on earth. Paul is actually the true founder of Christianity. He took what was basically just another sect in Judaism and turned it into a whole new religion. The original Christians believed in keeping the law and the commandments. Paul essentially watered down Christianity and turned it into the Jesus cult we know today and moreover to the Roman state religion as well as I said previously. Because Paul actually went after the original Christians, he persecuted them, he saw them as rebels within the Roman Empire, he killed them, he crucified them even, and then in the end he had this epiphany, this vision, the dream where he converts to Christianity. But he doesn't even convert to the proper Christianity of that time, but he makes up his own version. How convenient. It proceeds, Jesus cult meaning Paul placed most of the emphasis on Jesus rather than God. Yes. Early Jewish Christianity was the religion of Jesus. Pauline Christianity is the religion about Jesus. Paul basically taught that all you need to do to be saved is have faith in the death of Christ. Many of the early disciples didn't like him, but they tolerated him. You can really see the difference in the two teachings when you read Jesus' teachings in the Gospels, then contrast them with Paul, who never even quotes Jesus once. Moreover, he doesn't only not quote him, but he never met Jesus once. Paul never met Jesus, but changed basically everything that Jesus preached. Now we have some differences. Number one, Jesus taught that his followers should follow the Torah, the law. Yes. He preached the gospel of the kingdom. Yes. He presented himself as the Messiah and King of the Jews. Correct. Kingdom of heaven as Israel's prophetic earthly kingdom. Number five, preach repentance, keeping the law and commandments, forgiving others as necessary for salvation. Absolutely correct. So now Paul taught the Torah, the law, should be abandoned. He preached the gospel of the grace of God. He presented Jesus as the risen Lord, head of the church and the body of Christ. Number four, kingdom of heaven, heavenly position of the body of Christ. Number five, preached faith alone in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ as necessary for salvation. Yes, absolutely. And I believe that this leads to the confusion nowadays that we see with the famous example of the two men. One man is pious, he believes in God, he keeps all the commandments, and the other man is a sinner. The other man is a murderer, is a rapist, he steals and whatnot, but he accepts Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. So who goes to heaven now? According to the Paulian doctrine, the sinner goes to heaven. How would that be even fair? It continues. My choice of Muhammad to lead the list, now we have Michael Hart again, of the world's most influential persons may surprise some readers and may be questioned by others, but he was the only man in history who was supremely successful on both the religious and secular level. That's exactly what I just said before. 
I believe that even men like him, Muhammad, were to assume the dictatorship of the modern world, he would succeed in solving its problems in a way that would bring it the much needed peace and happiness. Yeah, I heard those quotes before, but yet again, I don't even understand why you would place them into this video. This video was about Jesus' teaching and then Paul's corruption of those teachings. I don't really understand why you would bring Muhammad into it. I actually really enjoyed the video and I agreed with 99 percent. However, when Ahmed Didat started comparing Jesus to Mohammed, I believe this is not the right way to go about things. Anyways, guys, this is it for today's video. Long enough as it is. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so and let me know in the comment section which video I should react to next. Please let me know, especially if you're Christian, what you think about this video. Do you follow Jesus or do you follow Paul? What does it mean for you to follow Jesus? Is it religion or is it just some metaphysical concept? What does it truly mean for you? Guys, if you want to further support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.